Hello Nigerians, like you know, Crime Fighters is all about security. In the last few months, our president has been talking about us being a member of the United Nations Security Council. This is the chambers that sits the Security Council members. We have just spoken to the spokesperson of the Secretary General, Kofi Annan, as it relates to transparency in governance. You remember some months back that the son, um, Kojo, was involved in the scandal of oil for food. And we felt as a Nigerian journalist visiting the United Nations that we should speak to them. What is the involvement of Kojo? What has transparency got to do in all of this? These are issues that we discussed with the Secretary General's spokesperson. For the benefit of our viewers in mm -hmm. Nigeria, I would like you to introduce yourself for us. Sure. My name is Stefan Dujaric, and that's D-U-J-A-R-R-I-C. I'm an associate spokesman for the Secretary General here at the United Nations. I've been in this job for about five years, and prior to that, I was, like you, a journalist for almost nine years. So I've been on your, I've been on your side, and I've been on this side. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Would you please tell us what the UN is all about and what they do? Because sometimes people just think UN is an American thing because it's based yeah. in America. You know, the UN is a multi-headed, sometimes almost schizophrenic organization. Um, but it is one that touches everyone's lives. Um, it's an organization of governments. It's an intergovernmental organization. It is by, in no ways a world government, but it is a place where governments can come and discuss political issues, humanitarian issues, uh, so social issues, and economic issues. It is also a place where, especially in the last uh, few years, the Secretary General Kofi Annan has made a great effort to reach out to civil society. Because if you've seen, and I'm sure in, in Nigeria and in many other countries, uh, civil society has taken on a great importance. And it is very, very important for governments and for this organization to hear what NGOs, uh, what non-governmental organizations have to say. To give you an example, um, the UN, through, let's say, the World Health Organization and UNICEF, um, deals with, obviously, health issues. In the case of Nigeria, uh, polio vaccination, and I know that's been an issue in, the, in, I think, the northern part of your country. It deals with issues that one government alone can obviously not deal with because diseases, poverty, terrorism, the environment, these problems know no borders. And it is only through governments and civil society getting together and trying to solve those problems that we can find a solution. It is also on the more uh, political side and judicial side, again to give you an example that relates to Nigeria, there is, as you know, a land dispute between Nigeria and Cameroon over the Bakasi Peninsula. Instead of resolving this uh, difference through force, both governments committed themselves to abide by the, um, the decision of the International Court of Justice. Um, they issued a ruling, then both presidents, President uh, Bia and President Obasanjo, came to the Secretary General to assist them in implementing this decision. And that's what we're doing on the ground, working with Nigerian officials and Cameroonian officials, trying to delineate the border, trying to deal with affected populations and transfer of authority. It's, it's a very slow process, um, it's painstaking, but it is so much better than war. And that's what the UN does, okay. you know, and it's, it's often, and it, Bakasi is a story that we often use here as an untold success of the UN. It's a story that the, the media in the West doesn't really care about. But in a nutshell, to me, it really, um, it identifies what the United Nations is all about, is that it's a place where people who decide to forego warfare to settle problems can come can come to and, and, and discuss. Thank you very much. Now that you mentioned the issue of Bakasi mm -hmm. and Nigeria, um, this will take me to the next question. Like, you have a problem. Sometimes when we have problems back home, mm -hmm. and maybe we have bad leaders or bad mm -hmm. government, like when we had during the military era, mm -hmm. we're quick to looking forward to saying, oh, UN will come to our aid. UN, why is UN not helping out? Mm -hmm. Why is UN not moving in to mm -hmm. ask the military uh, government to get out of mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Should that be the UN role? In well, you know, it depends. If 
one as again shouldn't see the UN as as a world government, as an all all mighty power that can come in and remove governments and, and so on. It, these issues and issues of sanctions and pressure for governments to be removed are dealt through this, the Security Council. But again, to go back to, to, to issues near, near to home, both the Secretary General and the African Union have made it abundantly clear that they will not tolerate people coming to power through extra constitutional means, whether it's military coup, whether it's changing the rules in midstream. See, you've seen what's happened in, um, in so, neighboring Togo, yeah. uh, where right away it, it, the, 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 the people who came to power realized that the neighbors, the democratically elected leaders of the, in the neighborhood, would not tolerate. And again, p pressure was put on verbally from the Secretary General, from the African Union, from your own president who took the leadership role, and a solution was found or is in the process of being found. Yeah. And again, it, the, the UN is only as strong and as powerful as its member states want it to be. Yeah, but is it right, just like they say outside here, that the UN is seen as a toothless bulldog, that is a body that only talks and does not act? Uh, on, the, on the political front, yes, it's, it's by nature a talk shop. That's what diplom diplomacy is about. Yeah. It's about talking, and talking is often much better than, than fighting. So. Yes, we do talk a lot, but the resolutions that the Security Council passes, which are binding uh, on sanctions, uh, for instance, they are only as strong as the willingness of the membership itself to apply those resolutions. The Secretary General is not an independent actor who can decide to send in troops. He doesn't have, we don't have an army. Yeah. You know, if we, when we mount a peacekeeping operation, we have to ask for troops. Uh, who are lent to us uh, by, by governments. So it, it is, again, the, the, the resolutions of the Security Council and the United Nations are only as strong as um, the governments, the members of this organization, want it to be. But that's why it's important for the population at large and NGOs to keep pressure on governments. And that's why we want them involved as well. Because they are often the ones who remind the governments and say, hey, you know what? There's a UN resolution that says this. You should act. You should. You should watch what what's going on. All right. We'll get back to the NGO issue yeah. later. But let's let, let me go to the main question why mm -hmm. we're here. Mm -hmm. Our topic is transparency in governance, mm -hmm. and uh, w that was one thing that we felt we should do is don't come to US without getting to UN to actually find out this issue of oil for food mm -hmm. has been on and on and on. And about this week, there was a casualty over this oil for food. Now, the Secretary General's son was part, mm -hmm. his name featured yes. prominently in this issue, mm -hmm. and apparently he was investigated somehow. And we also had a British lawmaker, George Galloway, mm -hmm. the French person, and um, another person from the Asian country who were all alleged to be involved mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in this oil for food. Now, is it right for us to say that um, because the UN was not transparent in most of these dealings, that was why um, the scandal broke out. I think you touch on a very interesting point, and, and one of the great lessons learned uh, for the United Nations in terms of this oil for food program, which was unique in its scope, in its financial uh, aspects, is for the need for greater transparency right from the start. Uh, and I think a lot of the problems that we're having now could have been avoided had decisions been made in 95 and 96 to be more transparent. But the reflexes of any organization, whether intergovernmental or others, is often to, in time of crisis, to look inward. These um, issues, these allegations of, of corruption and wrongdoing of, of UN staff uh, and of the way the program itself was administered and, and supervised by the Security Council came up last year. The Secretary General appointed uh, Paul Volcker, who is a former chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve Board, and uh, Richard Goldstone is a South African uh, judge and, and Mark Peeth, a Swiss uh, expert on money laundering, to look, to get to the bottom of this and to, to really almost op crack open the UN and look from top to bottom, look at the program, look who was involved in the program, who did what and when and who did wrong. And we've made it abundantly clear that UN staff that were found to have committed wrongdoing uh, by this commission would be punished. If it was wrongdoing in terms of violating 
internal UN staff rules, then they would be dealt with. And that's what happened this week with Mr. Stefanides, who was um, found to have violated procurement rules. He was dismissed. If a UN, a person under the authority of the Secretary General is found to have committed criminal wrongdoing, the Secretary General has promised that he would immediately lift the diplomatic immunity so that person can be prosecuted. All UN staff are um, ordered to cooperate with the Volcker Committee under threat of, of, uh, of disciplinary sanction. So we have opened ourselves like no other organization has over opened up itself. And you can see both um, professionally, it's been, it's been embarrassing. I mean, we found wrong, wrongdoing in which we're trying to correct. Um, personally, for the Secretary General, it's, it's been very difficult for him as a father. Um, I mean, his, his, as the Volcker report says, his, grown, his own grown son had not been uh, honest with him, as the Secretary General has said, he himself has said. And, as anyone who's a parent would understand, it's, it, 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 it's, it's difficult. But obviously, he had no control over what his grown, grown, son, um, grown son was doing. So we've opened ourselves completely. And Mr. Volker has access to everything in this building and everyone in this building. And the Security Council passed a resolution encouraging and asking all member states to also cooperate with Mr. Volker. Because this oil for food is not just about the UN Secretariat. It's about the Security Council and about the United Nations membership as, as a whole.